Don't leave me hanging. It's go time. Hey everybody, this is Josh, and welcome to another riveting game of StarCraft II. Once again, we have OGSMC as the blue Protoss down here in the bottom right corner of MLG Shakura's Plateau. His opponent, as always, Mal's Morrow, the red Zerg up here in the top left corner. And it is MLG's version of Shakura's Plateau, so we do have destructible rocks here in the back, not just a little cliff. This is not the newer ladder edition. It's the more classically trained Shakura's Plateau that people know and love from the GSL and the TSL3 and Major League Gaming. So MC and Morrow should both be aware of this. Basically, the MLG version of this map disallows any spawn positions except for cross positions. So it is essentially a two-player map. Morrow should know exactly where MC is and vice versa. We'll see if MC actually uh, remembers that or not, or, be or not, because... MC's never played in an MLG. He might not even know that that's how the map is rigged up, and he is actually going to go over to that back rock uh, horizontal position first and not find anything and maybe feel a little bit silly, but totally not MC's fault. Probably didn't even realize that uh, this map had been modified the way that it has. Morrow also has never played in an MLG, but might be a little bit more aware since uh, some of his European buddies have actually come over to play in MLG games. But here we go, Probe coming up the ramp, going to walk right underneath that Overlord. He knows where Morrow is, obviously. Uh, you've never been able to spawn vertically on this map, so MC should have figured it out regardless after scouting that bottom left position. Speedling build once again for Morrow, and it looks like that is just going to be his go-to ZVP strategy every time. Doesn't want to have to deal with an annoying probe blocking a hatchery when he can just make some speedlings first and then not even have to worry about it. There's no way a probe in a pylon can stand up against four zerglings. Forge coming out very quickly for MC, so perhaps some sneaky cannon play will be showing up here soon. We'll have to keep an eye on this probe now after seeing that forge come down, or just a uh, 17 Nexus. Forge fast expand, forge very fast expand. Morrow coming in here with this drone, going to see that and instantly get out of there. He does not want to be cannoned to death. MC shows up right as the Zergling speed should be getting started, but isn't because he doesn't have enough minerals. I don't know what changed there, why Maro uh, wasn't ready for that, but he did pull his drones off of gas, put them back on minerals, making some uh, zerglings now and a queen, of course, so that he can get his hatchery next. MC doing such a fast expand is great because he actually observed Maro doing the same build twice in a row to start off this series, and now he's just doing the same thing himself and going to have a bit of an advantage even. He knows that Morrow is not going to be doing any sort of one base play, and this is a safe build anyway against a one base play, except for maybe a, an eight roach rush, or a nine roach rush, or a seven roach rush. Uh, if he rushed roaches instead of dropping that hatchery, he might actually be able to win this game. We'll see what is going to happen instead as he did drop that hatch. He's getting his zergling speed as he normally does. Second gas coming online now for MC. Still does not have a gateway. Yeah, he does actually have one gateway, but he still does not have any units made out of that gateway. Just made one cannon for some early defense, and he's going to be chrono boosting out a bunch of probes. He's going to take a lead very, very quickly here before that hatch finishes. 21 harvesters against 16. There we see a Roach Warren coming up very quickly here for Morrow. Maybe if he just goes overdrive in Roach production, he might be able to get over here before MC actually has enough fighting units or cannons to stay alive. This drone from Morrow still just bouncing around on a nice little patrol path all the way around the base. Going to see any additional tech structures that MC might drop. Cybernetics Core is done now. Still working off of only one gate and that one forge. Both gas are complete now though, so he should be stockpiling. Not sure what he's going to be getting next, but this first stalker should be able to ward away that drone or just kill it. This Overlord is out of range to see that Stargate coming up, so forge fast expand into Stargate. Quite an interesting build here from MC. Morrow building a lot of roaches, five roaches as expected. He actually canceled his hatchery and is going the one base mass roach rush. So I did say that this could be a good idea. He might be able to kill something here, but if MC has a void ray up in the air by the time they get here, it could be uh, totally, totally in MC's favor. That drone was dealt with, it looks like. Don't see him bouncing around anymore. Stalker does have one kill, so yep, looks like he did his job. More cannons coming down here now. MC has zero map vision right now. He has no idea what Morrow's doing. He thinks that hatch is still coming up, but we know 
that there are instead seven roaches about to be busting down his front door here, and they do have the range to actually stay away from that cannon, or they could try to focus it down. The sentry only had enough energy for one force field, and three, four roaches are actually able to still hit the cannon. Another cannon will be done here soon. We have a stalker and a sentry trying to finish down these roaches. I'm going to go ahead and keep their health selected the entire time. One more roach could be micro to the back. No, Maro doesn't manage to save it. A couple of links come in here, try to help as well. Two more roaches about to supplement this force as three more cannons get dropped here behind this pylon. If Maro takes out this pylon, MC is essentially dead. Great force field there on the left side after that cyber next core gets killed and a gateway and a pylon coming down to replace it. Now the void ray is out. It's going to be fully charged here soon on just this roach meat. MC blocking essentially again with cannons. These roaches really don't have anywhere to go yet. So MC doing very, very good with his spending here, buying enough time for this void ray to come out. All these probes got pulled, but really don't even need them. Uh, second void ray going to be finished here soon as well. And Maro suddenly has no more forces. 43 supply for uh, Mr. MC, 29 for Morrow. That Roach Rush, unfortunately, totally, totally squashed by this six kill Void Ray, and now Morrow is stuck on one base with just a Roach Warren and a second Queen on the way for anti-air. That's all he's got. The second Void Ray will be done here soon as well. Or actually, is already done. Third Void Ray will be done soon. I don't know how MC... Uh, thinks he's going to follow up from here maybe just build one void ray at a time he still hasn't added on any more gateways he's just getting that cybernetic score rebuilt and some more gas in place he could make quite a lot of air units morrow must be panicking right now he is throwing up an evolution chamber should be trying to go for those spore crawlers here soon three void rays done now and he's been bouncing around the map killing these zerglings at the zelnaga towers killing whatever he finds in other places and morrow has to be very worried right now queen number three on the way this evolution chamber will be done here soon but the void rays just taking their sweet time waiting for this phoenix to come over here it is going to be able to lift a queen help these void rays out immensely other than that though all Morrow has to defend are speedlings and i don't have to tell you speedlings do horribly against air third queen done swore crawlers number one and two trying to come online now but these void rays once they get charged this is going to be very very hard for Morrow to stop i don't think no he doesn't have any energy for transfusions one of his queens gets lifted and powered down very, very quickly. Miles Morrow saying GG, OGSMC following up with a GG of his own, and he is going to move into the semifinals of the DreamHack Stockholm Invitational. Poor little Morrow. He tried. He had a great game there on Crossfire, but unfortunately was a victim of trying to kill a Forge Fast Expand with uh, 7 to 10 roaches. MC just too good with his walling off, his mineral spending. Everything was right on time for Mr. MC, and he is one of the best Protoss players in the world, so Maro should definitely not feel bad. He kind of got unlucky getting matched against him in the first round of this Invitational. I wish he had uh, gone farther to see some more games out of Maro, but that's just how it is when you've got 8 players in a miniature tournament like this, all of them capable of winning tournaments on their own. It's just a really exciting time for the viewers, but you're going to get matched up against one of the other best players in the world no matter what so Morrow eliminated MC moving on I'm going to cast a lot of games from the DreamHack Stockholm Invitational because I'm a huge fan of MC huge fan of Jinro Show, White Raw Huck all those other guys that are there TLO played in it as well and we're going to see those games here very very shortly so stick around please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and I'll see you guys very soon